okay. Oh, you know. That's right. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. I'm glad that you are here this morning to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I am glad that we have the technology to be online for those that maybe can't be here uh, today. But uh, we are here to lift up the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. To worship, to honor Him. So let's pray and thank Him for this opportunity. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you. We are a bunch of sinful people saved by your grace. And our coming together here today... Uh, is, is not what makes us right with you. Your cross makes us right with you. Our coming here today is to lift up your name, to praise you and thank you for who you are. So I pray, Lord, that you would open the eyes of our hearts, that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts and our minds, and that you would get all the honor and you would get all the glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We need you. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for the online technology. Um, and we pray that it would stay strong and those that maybe are not able to be here would be here as well. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Raya, I told you you wouldn't have to touch anything, but if you could turn up the overflow speakers, they're completely off. That way, the people, it's on the right, on the very right, it says overflow. It's on. What? It's on. It's on. Okay, good. It wasn't on earlier when we were practicing. All right, I invite you to stand and join us in our call to worship from Psalm 15. Please join me. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who, who may enter your presence on your holy hill? Those who lead blameless lives and do what is right, speaking the truth from sincere hearts. Those who refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Those who despise flagrant sinners and honor the faithful followers of the Lord and keep their promises even when it hurts. Those who lend money without charging interest and who cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people will stand firm forever. I forgot to mention that as we read this call to worship, you might think, well, this doesn't describe me. It does describe the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Christ, we can be found one of us. Greet one another in the name of the Lord as we get ready to sing praise. What? No, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So the doctors checked, they said it's nothing with his eyes, so they sent him for the MRI. And they said, well, it could either be a brain tumor or a stroke. So it was a slight stroke in the right side. And it's fine now. I mean, you know, it's just on the one side. On the one side. Yeah. He's fine. I mean, he loaded the porch with wood yesterday, so he's good. He's good. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Good to see you this morning. Morning. Too. morning. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I understand that Harry's got a little problem. Well, he's okay. Because, okay. yeah, he's doing fine. They don't know when it happened. I mean, he lost his vision. He's in my place. And, uh, like I said, he was out loading the porch with wood all yesterday, right, so uh, he's come fine. Let's together and give praise to the Lord.
has a hand motion when we do it with the preschoolers. We praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit. Three in one. Often at this point we have a corporate confession of faith. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the sermon. But this particular day we have a corporate prayer of confession. So it is in your bulletin. It also will be on the screen. Will you pray with me? Father God, we come before you this morning seeking to worship and follow you. We know, however, that we can only come before you 
through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask, worship, and adore you. Please search our hearts and find any offensive ways in us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, convict us of our individual and corporate sins. And give us the strength to confess them before you in silent prayer. As we do, we trust in your promise that as we confess our sins, you are faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Please take a moment for silent prayer, silent prayer of confession. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in Christ there is therefore no condemnation. Jesus has paid for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. If you trust in him and confess your sins, you are forgiven. Let those forgiven in Christ shout, Hosanna. 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 do this right now because I would be putting him on the spot. But I could say, David, stand up and tell us Psalm 1. Good night. <laughs> we've been working on it. In Sunday school, we've been working on memorizing Psalm 1. And someday I may do it, so be ready. Okay. <laughs> so, the Bible tells us, there's, there's a verse in Psalm 119, it says, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you. So when we memorize God's word, we hide it in our heart. So I thought we would go through our memory verse for this month today, which is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Aaron, do you have any motions for that in some school? Oh, they do, and I, I've got to learn them. I'll do it. Oh. Not <laughs> All right. Maybe you can help. There are a lot that know it. Okay. Uh, All right. So, say love. Love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37 and 39. All right. Thank you, Erin. Watch Erin for the motions. And let's say it together again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37 and 39. All right, one more time. One more time. This is our last time. Maybe the kids out here are listening as well. Enjoy this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. 
Matthew 22, 37, and 39. Thank you. When you go home, that's on the bottom of your bulletin. You practice that. You read it. Those of you that can read, those of you that can't, have somebody help you to remember that and hide it in your heart. Okay? Who made you? God. What else did he make? Everything. And why did he make you and everything else? For the glory. Right, let's pray. Lord God, thank you for this awesome group this morning. Young men and young women that are growing and, and growing. And I pray that they would know you, Lord, and that they would understand that you made them, you made everything else for your own glory, and that they would love you with all their heart, soul, and mind, and love others as themselves. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, the baskets are Just take one thing. Well, we have begun uh, just a little bit before the season of Lent starts, toward the end of February, <clears throat> to look at the book of Revelation. And if you're paying attention, which I hope you are, you might say, well, those are the same verses you did last week. And they are. But we're going to look at a different part, a different phrase of verses 1 through 6. So I invite you, before I do, can everybody hear me okay? Can you hear back in the back okay? Can you guys hear back there? Hello? Okay, all right, good. <laughs> all right, Revelation 1, 1 through 6. Before we read that, let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Lord God, thank you for all the kids. What a blessing. How awesome to have them here and to be uh, storing your word in their hearts. Lord, we heard some of the, the images today. We sang some of the images that we see in the book of Revelation. The lamb that was slain. Worthy is the lamb that was slain, we sang. And that you are the king of kings. Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts right now. You are the same God that gave this revelation of Jesus that John wrote down. You are the same Holy Spirit that will apply it to our mind and our hearts and to our lives. So I pray that the power of your Holy Spirit would speak to your people through your word. I don't have things good to say. Lord, I am a sinner saved by grace. You have called me to proclaim your word. And I pray that your spirit would speak to me and through me. And I do pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my rock and you are my redeemer. May you get all the glory. May you get all the praise. May you be lifted up during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Revelation chapter 1. I'm reading verses 1. <clears throat> Excuse me, through six, hear the word of the Lord. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw. That is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it. And take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 1928, in Yankee Stadium, sadly it wasn't a baseball game, 
It was a football game. It was a football game in Yankee Stadium in 1928. It was undefeated Army versus Notre Dame. Halftime of that game, Notre Dame coach Newt Rockney gave a speech to his team. And he told him the story about George Gipper. Eight years earlier, after his senior year at Notre Dame, George Gipper had passed away. Just before he passed away, Coach Newt Rockney visited him in the hospital. And he said, just one day, Coach, go out there and win just one for the Gipper. Well, eight years later, 1928, halftime, undefeated Army versus Notre Dame, Newt Rockney brings out that story and tells that story to the team, and they go on to defeat Army 12 to 6. Twelve years later, in 1940, there was a movie made about it. A guy named Ronald Reagan you may have heard of him. He played George Gipp. And said that now famous line on the big screen, win just one for the giver. Now why do I tell you about that when we're talking about the book of Revelation? I tell you about that because it was a great halftime speech. A great leader. Someone that those team members looked up to. Newt Rockney gave a great speech. Great leaders gave great words. And they do actions that can be looked up to, actions that can be followed. Leaders know what to say and what to do, and people follow those leaders. Well, last week I told you that I believe the book of Revelation is not a puzzle book to try and figure out the future. Instead, it is a picture book showing us the risen, exalted Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason I tell you that story is because the risen, exalted Lord Jesus Christ is our ultimate leader. He is the one to look up to. He is the one to follow. Last week we talked about he is the one who saved us. We said that he freed us from our sin by his blood because he loves us. And today I want to focus on another phrase from Revelation 1-6 through that reminds us he is our prophet our priest, and our king. Brothers and sisters, keep looking to the risen, exalted Christ who intercedes for us, who paid the price for our sins, and who will lead us and keep us safe. I want to look today at how he is our prophet, our priest, and our king. From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. Now I want to remind you for a moment that, that in the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, we are what is called a confessional church. And, and what that means is we confess what we believe. We confess these, these confessions that have been written down teaching what we believe the Bible teaches. Many churches are not confessional. Some don't know what they believe. And some take a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, and a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. Presbyterians have always been confessional. When we were part of the other denomination, our book of confessions had the Scots Confession, the Heidelberg Confession, the Westminster Confession. Those are all very good, solid, biblical confessions. Then we had some others that weren't so great. If you go down to uh, Paris, Pennsylvania, or in Washington County, there's several Presbyterian churches that are part of the eco-denomination. In their book of confessions, they have the Heidelberg Catechism, Westminster Confession, and a couple of others. In our EPC denomination, we have one confession, the Westminster Confession. Often in worship, we do some things from the Belgian Confession, and you ask why? I, I like that one better. But our official denominational confession is the Westminster Confession of Faith. We're not the only ones that are confessional. There are a few <laughs> confessional Baptists out there. When you find them, they follow what's called the London Baptist Confession of 1689. 
We are a church that confesses this is what we believe. We make confession. And I tell you that because here is the Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 8, paragraph 1, Christ the Mediator. In his eternal purpose, it pleased God to choose and ordain the Lord Jesus, his only begotten Son, to be the mediator between God and man. Jesus is the prophet, priest, and king, the head and savior of his church, the heir of all things, and the judge of the world. The prophet, one who proclaims God. The priest, one who performs sacrifices before God. The king, one who protects, provides, and leads the people. So our scripture said, from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, someone who proclaims who God is. Jesus is the faithful witness. He speaks about who God is. But listen to Hebrews 1, 3. Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. Jesus is the faithful witness about God because Jesus is God. God in the flesh. The same John who had this vision given to him wrote in his letter that which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and touched with our hands. Verse 3 he says, that which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you. So we have the revelation of Jesus given to John, telling us that he is the faithful witness. We have the letter written by John saying, we proclaim to you what we have seen and what we've heard. We have the gospel of John telling us we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. And we have the letter to the Hebrews telling us Jesus is the exact imprint of God's nature. We have all of that, plus we have that Jesus did miracles that witness to God. I love it when we get into the miracles in, in chapel and preschool, because I define to the preschoolers a miracle this way. Something only God can do. So Jesus, when he does the miracles, is revealing to us, he's witnessing to us that he is God. Jesus told parables that witnessed to God. And as we talked about last week, because of his love, he freed us from our sin by going to the cross and witnessing to God's grace and peace. Jesus is the prophet who speaks for God. Now, now keep in mind, Revelation is written to Christians who are being persecuted. So empowered by the Holy Spirit, keeping our eyes on the risen, exalted Lord Jesus Christ, you and I can be faithful witnesses for God. You and I can be a faithful witness to Jesus Christ because he is a faithful witness about God. I want to remind you that in the Old Testament, the primary job of the prophets was foretelling. Sometimes it was foretelling, and foretelling, you all know, is, is saying things that will happen in the future. And everybody thinks that's most of the prophets. That's only a small part of the prophets. For the majority of the work of the prophets, it was foretelling, speaking the truth, calling people back to God, calling people back to his covenant. And Jesus is our prophet. He tells us the truth. Repent and believe the good news. He calls us back to God. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. And in a world that calls us to conform to the ideas around us, to the values around us, 
the values of this age by looking to the risen, exalted Jesus Christ, we are reminded that he is the faithful witness. And with his spirit living in us, we can be a faithful witness. Jesus is our prophet, but he's also our priest. In the Old Testament, and many of you went through that Bible study last year where we went through the whole Old Testament. In the Old Testament, what did the priests do? They intercede for the people. They stand between the sinful people and the holy God. Well, Hebrews 10 tells us that Jesus not only offered a sacrifice, he was the sacrifice. Hebrews 10, 11. Every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. He is our priest whose sacrifice paid for our sins and whose resurrection promises our resurrection. From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. He conquered death. And if he is the firstborn, then there's going to be a second and a third and a fourth and so on, meaning us. And he ascended to the right hand of the Father, and there, as our priest, he intercedes for us. Romans 8.34 tells us, Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Last week I said that for me, as a symbol of the book of Revelation, I see that little fish, Dory, from Binding Me Up. And Dory's mantra, her motto, her catchphrase was just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. And last week I said, just keep swimming is representative of us looking to the risen, exalted Lord Jesus Christ. What John calls abiding in Christ. So the word from Revelation to you and me and to Hannah Church is just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Because this world calls us foolish. I saw a tweet on Twitter this past week that said something to the effect of, I can't believe these Christians still follow a book that was written thousands of years ago. A bunch of dummies is essentially what the tweet said. I saw another one that said, sin is just a construct of your culture, so every culture makes up their own things that they, they call sin. We live in a world that conforms and wants us to conform to its values, and its values say, you are God. You decide what is right for you. And in this letter to Revelation, John says, Christian believers in Christ just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep looking to the risen, exalted Jesus Christ. He is the faithful witness that will help you be the faithful witness. He is the priest that not only sacrificed, he is the sacrifice. And he rose from the dead and you will raise from the dead. And then third, he is the ruler of the kings of the earth. From Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. I want to remind you of a promise that God made to David. The promise was in 2 Samuel chapter 7. I'm beginning at verse 8 of 2 Samuel 7. Thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. 
And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled, David, and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So the promise is that a descendant of David will be on the throne forever. We're told in the New Testament that Jesus fulfills that promise. We're told most clearly by the angel Gabriel when he was speaking to Mary in Luke chapter 1. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his, of his kingdom there will be no end. So the promise is in 2 Samuel 7. The angel Gabriel tells young Mary, Jesus is the fulfillment of that prophet, of that promise. And in between all that time, we have Psalm 89. Psalm 89 has this promise in view, and it speaks of the Lord talking to David. Psalm 89 says, He, David, shall cry to me, the Lord. You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. In Psalm 89, the Lord says, David, you will be the highest of the kings of the earth. The New Testament tells us that Jesus is from the line of David and has fulfilled the promise that someone will always be on the throne. And our text here, our revelation of Jesus is saying that he is the ruler of the kings of the earth. Revelation was written in the, the mid-90s, not the 1990s, mid-90s. Now, there are some that believe it was written in the mid-60s, and that's a legitimate that view that, that some people hold. I'm going to go with most likely it was in the mid-90s. And in the mid-90s, if you were a good citizen, you would say, Emperor Domitian is Lord. Caesar Domitian is Lord. Caesar is Lord. The revelation of Jesus Christ to John says, wait just a minute. Caesar is not the ruler of the kings of the earth. Jesus is. Caesar is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. Hear what Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 6. I charge you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. What is Paul talking about? What is Jesus' good confession before Pilate? Well, his good confession before Pilate was that he was the king of the Jews. John 18. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. 
And Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. I'm told that in the Greek language, you say that I am a king, is sort of like Jesus saying, You are correct, Pilate. You are correct. I am the king of the Jews. Paul tells Timothy that Jesus made the good confession. And I'm thankful to tell you that by the power of the Holy Spirit, looking at the risen, exalted Lord Jesus Christ, you and I can make the good confession. Jesus is Lord. He is the ruler of the kings of the earth. And that's good news. Because if Jesus is Lord, with all due respect to their office, Joe Biden is not. If Jesus is Lord, with all due respect to his position, Josh Shapiro is not. Politics is not Lord. And the economy is not Lord. Entertainment is not Lord. Jesus is Lord. Our king, our leader, our protector, the one that we can trust and follow. Well, so what, Pastor Jefferson? Thanks for telling us a whole bunch of stuff. Brothers and sisters, the, the Christian life is full of ups and downs. And the temptations for us to quit, the temptations for us to compromise, are perpetual. They will never stop. Did you hear one of the biggest stories of, of this past week? Involved the Philadelphia Flyers? I hate the Flyers. I don't really care about the Eagles, and I'm kind of glad about the Phillies, but I hate the Flyers. And you should too if you're a good Penguins fan. <laughs> but the Flyers came out last week celebrating LGBTQ Pride Night. And to do that, they wore jerseys that had their regular Flyers logo, but they weren't the regular Flyers logo. They wore the rainbow colors, not of God's promise, but of the LGBT movement or community, however you want to say it. And in addition to that, to celebrate this night, they had sticks that had the rainbow colors matched on. And they, they did this during their warm-up. One Philadelphia player just said, I'm not going to participate in well, guess who the media went after after this game? They went after the one player that said, I'm not going to participate in that. And they said to him, why did you not participate? His answer was incredible. He said, I respect all people. Great. And because of my religion, I want to be true to my religion. I didn't participate. Oh, my goodness. Did that set them off? What is your religion? Russian Orthodox. <clears throat> this man, I don't know his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, but I do know that he was willing to say, this world wants me to conform. This world wants me to say that this thing is okay, and my faith that I have subscribed to all my life does not allow me to participate in that, so I'm just going to sit it out. By the way, his faith would be the same as our faith in regards to that. He got attacked like you wouldn't believe. He got the heat put up on him. In fact, an ESPN analyst said, well, if he's Russian Orthodox, he should get on a plane and go back to Russia. Because this is the United States where we conform to the belief that everybody better be on I would say that because that's one example of the pressures that will come upon believers in Jesus Christ. It was actually after that story that I found all the comments mocking our faith. Can you believe these Christians actually believe this book that was written thousands of years ago? Oh, sin, that's just something that's, that's made up. And you hear it, and you'll hear it more and more. 
You actually believe that ancient book? Come on. You really believe that God created this whole planet in six days? Oh, give up on that. Try this. Do that. Everybody's doing it. It'll be okay. And the heat gets turned up and up and up and up. And the good news from Revelation is, in those times when the heat is put on us, like it was put on the people in the nineties to conform to the world around them and say, Caesar is Lord. When the world around us says, conform to everything's okay, do this. When that heat is turned up, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep looking to the risen, exalted Lord Jesus Christ. Because he tells us I'm your faithful witness. I'm the prophet. I'll empower you, empower you by my Holy Spirit to be my faithful witness, no matter how hot it is. He tells us, I'm the firstborn from the dead. I died for you and I rose again. You're going to rise again. Keep looking to me and following me. He tells us, I'm the ruler of the kings of this earth. I am the king. I am the Lord, which means some agenda, some force, some person is not the Lord. Man of our church, isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? That the exalted, risen Lord Jesus Christ says, I've got it. Remain in me. Focus on me. Wow. Like the old hymn writer said, what a friend. We have in Jesus. May you and I continually keep looking to the risen, exalted Lord Jesus Christ. As he intercedes for us, pay the price for us. He will lead us and hold us. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for this time in which we live. For many of us, it's a different time than when we grew up. It's a different time than anything that we've known. Often in our time, in our history, in our life, the Christian faith has been welcomed. The Christian faith has been celebrated. And it's been pretty easy for us to say, I follow Jesus. But just like for those believers in the 90s, the world around them wanted to conform them and wanted them to say that Caesar was Lord. The world around us wants us to conform to all of its ideas. Ideas that go against you as the creator. You as the way to life. You as light. So Lord, thank you for this vision. Thank you for this unveiling, this revelation of Jesus Christ that shows us that you are our prophet, you are our priest, and you are our king. Oh Lord, if there's anyone here or anyone watching that, that knows about you, that even knows the story and probably could even tell some verses, but they've never known you in a relationship, I pray that today would be that day of salvation. Lord, that they would simply, because your Holy Spirit is prompting them to, that you would, they would simply turn, repent, and believe the good news. And know that as they do that, Lord, they're, they're at peace with you. They're your son, they're your daughter. And then they can live their life empowered by your Spirit every day. Lord, for those that have understood that for a long time, encourage them for another day. As the temperature gets turned up, as we see that people are not always welcoming of faith in you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes they're downright hostile to you, Lord Jesus. Let us feel the joy of you holding us. 
Let us be a light in the darkness by the power of your Holy Spirit. And may you get all the glory and honor and all we say. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you and praise you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We respond to God's word in a number of, of different ways. One of them is to go to him in prayer. We had a number of prayer requests in Sunday school. Um, are there any others that you would like to lift up before the congregation this morning? Thank you. Charlene's just feeling a little bit under the weather today. All right, we do. It, it, it is weird not to see Charlene here. So Charlene, I'm guessing you're watching, and we will be lifting you up, praying you're back in your seat next, next week. Anything else? Bonnie. We will pray for Diana. Thank you, Donna. Rachel. I want to pray for Eli. He hasn't been feeling well for a while, and um, he has to see the doctor again soon. So. Okay. You did not hear. Please pray for Eli, who has not been feeling well, and is going to hopefully get some answers. Lindley, I don't want to put you on the spot, but happy birthday to that little guy you're holding. That's awesome. Praise the God. Happy one, Maverick. Hi. Yeah. Happy birthday. He looked as soon as I said his name. Let's pray. Thank you for the smile on that little guy's face, Lord. We thank you for Maverick. And what a blessing he is to his family, to our congregation. And I thank you for Donna's heart, for this woman, Diane. And, and Lord, we lift her up to you. And we ask that she would know you, that she would know your love and your mercy and your forgiveness, and that you would give her healing and, and grace. That's our hope. That's our prayer. That's what we would ask for. Lord, I pray that you would give some answers to what's going on with Eli, that, that they can get him healthy, Lord. And lift up Rachel. I can tell, Lord, that she's worried about her son. Lord, it's weird not to see Charlene in the front row. Just pray that you would uh, bring health to her body. Lord, we had a number of things in Sunday school that we, we were lifting up to you, and we lift those things up to you again right now. Asking for your healing, asking for your mercy. And then, Lord, I know there are things that were not spoken out loud. Struggles that we just didn't mention out loud. I lift up those that are, are struggling with different situations. Whether it is health and physical needs, whether it's relationships. Lord, whether it's job issues or whatever it might be. Lord, we ask for your mercy and your grace. I pray, Lord, that you will empower us by your Holy Spirit to be salt and light in a world that says that we should just forget about it. Lord, I pray for our preschool and thank you for those that are currently in it and, and those that are already registering for next year. Pray for our teachers and helpers and thank you for everyone that has been involved in that ministry to give you glory and honor. Pray for those who serve our country. We pray for missionaries, whether they're here in the United States or whether they're around the world, to proclaim your name to people. We pray for the Church of Jesus 
in the South Side community. Thank you for the things that we can do together. Thank you for the Bible school ministry. And pray, Lord, that, that you would uh, be glorified in that as, as things begin to get ready for that this coming summer. Thank you for the Kids Bible Club, Lord, and how we're able to help with that and pray that you would get all the glory and honor and that the kids would know you. Thank you for loving us and freeing us from our sin by your blood. Please hear us now as we come before you praying the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We respond to God's word by giving of our time, our abilities, and the resources he's given us in the first place. So I invite the ushers to come forward and receive the tithes and offerings given in faith. that have been given. We pray that you would provide for every need of your people. We pray that the message of Jesus, the grace and truth of Jesus, may go out throughout Western Pennsylvania and your world. Thank you for this opportunity to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. A few announcements to look over. Um, our Revelation Bible study will begin on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Uh, we are going to, for that first night, we are going to read through the entire book of Revelation, all 22 chapters. Different people are going to be reading that. Um, if you would like to have a copy and follow along, we're going to use the what is in our Pew Bibles, which is the 1984 NIV. There's copies of it uh, in the back behind where uh, Sue is sitting there on that table. There's copies if you'd like to have a copy that you can write on and do all that kind of stuff. And if we run out of those, we'll make more. But you're invited to come. We even have, I think, a couple people that aren't from Hanover that have said, oh, I want to come. I want to be part of that. So we may see some uh, new faces on, on Tuesday at 5 o'clock. Lakeview, the, the nursing home, this afternoon at 3 p.m. Look forward to going there and singing and praying and, and ministering with the people. Anyone is welcome to join us in that. Next week, we have a congregational meeting where we will be uh, electing slash re-electing because of our change in the bylaws that happened last year, um, our elders and our deacons. So we would invite you to stay and be part of that if you are a member of the church, particularly next Sunday following worship. 
I got a thank you note from Barb Rupert thanking our congregation for our participation in the, um, the live nativity that some of you were a part of and our participation in the kids club ministry. She is so very thankful of that. For those of you that are planning to help with the kids club uh, ministry this spring, I guess is the technical word for it, uh, February 22nd through March 29th. February 22nd through March 29th, those Wednesday nights, um, in that time period, six Wednesday nights, we will be doing that. Installation. What's that? Installation. For the new pastor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Sunday at 3. Sunday at, yeah, thank you. Their, their installation service for their new pastor is Sunday at 3. Thank you. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. Next Sunday. Um, now the next one might throw you off, but I want to get it out there because they invited us. A number of years ago, some of you sang in a Christmas cantata called a Dis An Evening in December. Anybody remember that? We had people from about five or six different churches that took place in that cantata. I got an email recently from the music director over at Hebron Church on the curve there in, in 30, just before Janoski's. And they're going to do that cantata in, in December and wanted to invite any of us that would like to sing in that. You might say, well, Pastor Jefferson, that's Christmas, that's far away. Well, they're going to start rehearsals in June. Uh, so if you'd like to be part of that, I thought we had our books, but I can't find them anywhere. I think we actually borrowed them and gave them back. Oh, did we? Okay. I think we borrowed them. So that's why we don't have any paper. So anyways, uh, uh, if you would like to be part of that, um, certainly there's flyers back there telling you when the rehearsals are. And um, it was a neat experience when we hosted it here. I'm sure it will be a neat experience uh, when they do it there. They plan to do the cantata on December 17th. And I reached out to the uh, director about when, and he said they haven't come to a conclusion yet, but they're thinking late afternoon, early evening on Sunday, December 17. All right. Any other announcements for things coming up a little sooner that I forgot or need to mention? Don? Um, yes. <clears throat> the session has asked me as part of the Finance Committee to remind everyone about for asking, uh, for member asking. Uh, it's $37.50 a year for member, and we'd like to see if we can't get the contributions for those to come up. Last year, our contributions range was about 35% of the people. And we'd like to see that number come up a little bit. So um, we're asking if you'd be willing to contribute to that. Thank you. Thank you, Don. All right. Our closing song is to our king to crown him with many crowns. Let's we'll stand and sing this.
I did forget to mention, if you volunteer to be a reader on Tuesday, I have the list of what chapter I'd like you to do. So please don't leave without me giving you that paper so you know what, what you'll be reading on Tuesday night. Jesus is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He is our prophet, our priest, and our king. He's risen exalt and exalted. May we keep our eyes on him. Now receive the message. For bless you and keep you. For make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Thank <laughs> you.